Are you a grower? Are you tired of lugging around too many bottles? Is it too expensive? Is it so confusing? Tired of reading feed charts? Well, guess what? There is an easier way. Introducing the Stash Blend. You can now get your bag of Stash Blend premium additives that you can add to your garden using just about any base nutrients. Go to stashblend.com and get your order today. This episode is brought to you by AC Infinity. The Ion Beam Kit is AC Infinity's full spectrum LED bar lighting. This kit includes a lighting controller, four LED grow light bars, and four steel bars that allow for flexible mounting on any part of the grow tent. Its unibody housing and aluminum board feature full-spectrum Samsung LM301H white LEDs. And the beauty of it is, you can integrate this with all of the AC Infinity products in your garden. And if for some reason you don't already have the Controller 6.9 Pro, well, this kit includes an innovative controller that features four brightness intensity levels and four daily timer settings. This LED is not only efficient, but very affordable, especially when using that discount code THESTASH15 at checkout. From the Stash Podcast, we're back. Welcome, boys. Good to see you, boys. Hey, how's it going? We have a special guest today, a very special guest, a pioneer, someone who inspired all of us, I believe, maybe a lot of viewers, Mr. Jorge Cervantes. Hey guys, how you doing? How you doing? Glad to, glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. It's a, it's a true honor. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm real happy today. You know, I live in uh, just outside of Barcelona, Spain now. We've moved recently. But the deal is, yeah, and so I'm a little disorganized. I don't have all my stuff, and that's why uh, why I'm not using this microphone because uh, uh, technical, he, he hasn't stopped by yet. So, uh, but he will soon. Uh, yeah, anyway, for anybody that doesn't know me, um, I've been around now. This is, <laughs> I'm entering my fifth decade fifth decade that's like a decade's 10 years long right so that's that's a while and we were talking with i was talking with uh, uh with the guys here just a few minutes ago uh, uh <laughs> about uh oh God, a few things you know inspiration and whatnot but i'm really happy to hear that chris is writing a book and that you guys are all carrying on with stuff that's uh really important uh, because you know, I mean, I risk I risk my uh, my fanny for years. For years, I used to have to wear a disguise. Uh, you can go to my my website. I don't know if I can say that. It'll be in the description. It'll be in the description. So so I don't say the magic word uh, <laughs> that that already got me kicked off of YouTube uh, a few times. Um, yeah, and I've been reprimanded nonstop. So it was a little bit rough, and you know, but so is so is life. So what the heck? But anyway, um, little just a little bit of uh, background about me. I've written, I've written. I, I'm kind of amazed, but more than fifty books. Wow. Fifty books, five books. That's a handful of books, right? And they're also now in eight languages, or they they have been for some time. Um, yeah, and I published them. Like year, like over the years, uh, when I was when I was here in, in Europe, because I've been here for quite a while, and I traveled extensively uh, in Latin America and uh, Western Europe, Australia, and obviously the United States. I'm a U.S. citizen, and Canada. Um, yeah. So um, anyway, yeah. So like the websites would be there, and oh yeah, I wanted to tell you. See this book here. It's a pretty good sized book. Uh, it's got this great title up here and check it out. It's over 600 pages long. And I must say it's really well done. In fact, just to do, you guys may have seen these drawings before, oh, right here. These drawings before, well, this time they're a lot bigger. In fact, most, most everybody's copied them all over the world. But it took me seven different uh, uh, press checks, about fifteen thousand uh, U.S. dollars, to to go through that to make sure that these these uh, the colors were correct. They had to be correct because if they're not correct, well, then you know you're wrong, and you can't be wrong. You know, I mean, when you're looking at plants, you gotta you gotta be able to diagnose the nutrient deficiencies and excesses properly. So, um, yeah, anyway, it's a little bit, and like I say, it's free on my website. The web, website's going to be down in the description below. And, um, 
yeah, and doesn't matter what language you talk. Well, actually, you can only talk eight different languages, uh, not just not just English. Uh, first one it went into was was Spanish. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. See, here in Europe, a lot of people talk uh, more than well. Uh, more than one language. Myself, I only talk two, and I feel a little bit limited. Um, I can understand several others, you know, Italian, Italian and Portuguese pretty easy, and French, it's a little bit rougher. You can, you, I, can, I can read it okay, and also Catalan. I can read that, but uh, speaking it, I, I really don't have command. So, um, yeah, anyway, so if anybody else from a different country, and uh, obviously if you're um, Canadian in, or uh, in Latin, Latino, you, uh, you can get it in either French or Spanish. Yeah, and I've written several others, you know, that are, that are in those languages too. You're so, um, yeah, and I used to write for this magazine. Actually, this just came out not that long ago. Or well, actually, in two thousand and seven, it's a compendium of, of articles that I wrote. Um, and, and well, it was I don't know for the last three or four years worth of articles that I wrote because uh, I work for this magazine, this magazine right here for oh god about twenty years. Um, I wrote for them twenty maybe 25 i used to in fact we'll see <laughs> this is kind of funny look I it's have a much different face on there today or that i see uh, today than there is then well <laughs> yeah it's got i, I i'm old uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, I've been your hair has so changed long. it's the disguise the disguise yeah, well, is a, a this, lot different uh, yeah, I, I uh, normally my back then my beard was was uh, brownish red and and my hair was blonde. It's blonde. I pull it back today. I've got a, I do have a ponytail, but um, yeah. Anyway, anyway. So um, yeah. So I, I I had to wear this uh, this uh, silly disguise for about uh, uh, twenty years actually because uh, things were pretty rough. Um, I spent a lot of time, uh, well, I went across a lot of borders, and, uh, uh, yeah, it was, uh, well, uh, I spent a bunch of time in the little room, and but not so I would. I've only, I haven't been arrested and done, I haven't done hard time. I haven't done hard time. So that's good. So I have to ask, you've been through the ringer when it comes to this plant and your journey why, if I may ask, what got you into this journey in the first place? Well, yeah, that's a, actually a good question because, you know, I started uh, so long ago. I was sure, I was sure it was going to be uh, completely 100% legal back when I started in, in the early 80s. Because the first book, I don't have one here. Um, I don't know where it's at, actually, because we, like I said, we just moved. Uh, but when I started, um, there was really, really bad information, uh, basically, and that was kind of a problem. In fact, it was a real problem. And people were withholding information from other people, uh, which was, uh, well, it just wasn't fair because a lot of people were, were making huge mistakes, you know. Uh, for example, they were they were going out and digging up some gra- uh, some some dirt in the backyard and putting it in a five gallon bucket and trying to 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 grow in that. And they wonder why their plants look like this. You know, I mean, <laughs> they just weren't very big. And um, so I saw that. And I, I, I mean, like I, I'm a lifetime gardener. I've been gardening since I was a little kid, and I always liked gardening. Um, yeah, and. Uh, Oh, I've had several garden businesses. I've cut trees. I've done um, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. I've done greenhouses, a, a store, everything. Uh, but but my real my real passion is to edu- help help people learn to educate them. And um, back then, like I say, there was people were just making things up. You know, if they didn't know the answer, they'd make it up. Like here, here here's an example. One simple example, you know, the, the old cone reflectors, cone hoods, they call them China hats, not really politically cor- correct, but uh, yeah, that was, uh, everybody had those. And I asked around, I, I, I must have asked like 50, 50 different people, 
You know, I said, well, why are, why are that we're actually making these things? You know, I said, why, why are they like that? And, and I get, you know, the real smart, smart aleck answers like, well, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. It's a, or, or, yeah, or, or, well, you can figure it out yourself. Just on and on, just bad answers, bad answers. Finally, I went into a shop where this guy was making them, and I said, why are, why are they this shape? Why are they this size? And the guy says, oh, that's really easy because, because the material comes in this size. It comes in four feet wide by 10 feet long, and this way we get the most out of all the material. And that's the answer. That was the silly answer. You know, um, it was crazy, crazy. And then, uh, oh, yeah, I couldn't believe it. It was weird, weird. Um, yeah, so that's the answer to the question, just to really, so people would, people would be able to grow more and, uh, and better products. That's it. That's literally why most of us got into it is, is the videos that were out on YouTube at the time were just lower quality. There wasn't, there were only ones that were solid and spot on. There was a handful from yourself. Literally. <laughs> I remember the, a, a bubble hash video. I used that to the T that was like my main video to get started. And I was like, well, I've watched all of his videos. These are the only professionally made videos that are available. So yeah. it, it, I started, you know, learning how to produce the content to share the experience that I was gaining and, here we are today, you know, 10 years later for myself, a decade and not, not quite as long, obviously, but uh, it's, it started with a very similar journey. And, and uh, people like yourself inspired me to be like, hey, you know, Jorge did it. He, he jumped out and became a pioneer to say, you know, I'll take the arrows for everybody else and I'll, I'll be the pioneer. Like, I'll do it, you know, and you're still here making it happen. I got I got scars in me. I got one here. I got another one here. <laughs> I got scars, you know. Yeah, I got a bunch in my back, too, from running. <laughs> what I'm saying, though, is it's, it's the people who are truly passionate about this, who stayed with the plant this long to be able to help it evolve to the point where it is. And then there wasn't as much science. There wasn't as much uh, things to go with it. Everybody was against you, I'll tell you. Everybody was against you. I remember, uh, you know, one of my, I mean, because I've been in the greenhouse industry. I, I understand what it's like there. We, I, had, I had a greenhouse, and, and uh, those guys, I remember, they used to write articles uh, saying, stay away from people like me. I've been, I have literally, I have been in rooms where half, of the, I, I walk into the room, half the people would, in the whole room would leave. I'm serious. They didn't want to be seen in the same room with me. That's a fact. It's the um, stigma and it's this negative stigma that I feel like was why you had to hide yourself so long and why you had to hide behind the dreadlocks. All the know? government propaganda worked. It worked really well. And people were, you know, they just avoid it. They stay away from it. It was, but yeah, yeah, that's, these are all, all true things. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, Chris, Chris and I were talking about this. Like his his book that he's put out recently, he's deep diving into organic growing, and th a lot of this stuff has been around for a long time, but there hasn't been science to go with it. There hasn't been anything for the people who want to have the actual data. That's just been what people call bro science, and a lot of it will work, but there's now stuff that's making it so people are cutting through, cutting corners, but also being able to get the results and like. Hey, Chris, if you want to touch on that a little bit about some of the stuff from the past that has evolved now that science can actually, we can actually get testing. Like in Israel, there's a lot of uh, different studies they do. I've got family who just moved back from Israel and the medical scene there is, is crazy when it comes to our plant versus in America and the restrictions that we have. Have you noticed a, a evolution in some of the things that let's say in your first book compared to now in the more recent books that have changed anything that really stands out for you? Oh man, there's pretty much everything. Um, uh, Israel, Israel, you know, I got one of my, one of my friends, uh, good friends, uh, Tony Le Levi or Levi, Le Le Levi, Levi is what you said here, but Le Levi. Uh, yeah, he had a, he had a, uh, a store or a dispensary here, a medical dispensary here, here, in, or well, yeah, in Barcelona, and also, and then now he's back in Israel, uh, there. But I also, I also was hanging out with him. They, he was down in, in Colombia for, for several years, and I went and visited their facilities and everything there. And his, what's his partner's name? Mauricio. Yeah, Brit, British guy. Um, anyway, he's down there. He talked, you know, well, he's half Colombian and half British. Uh, 
but yeah, they're they're uh, quite advanced, quite advanced. In fact, my my partner uh, Stefan Meyer has spent a good deal of time over there, and I'm I'm actually uh, jealous because uh, he went to uh, uh, Rafael or Dr. Rafael Mishulam's, uh, uh last birthday party, and I missed it. Dang it. I was I had other things I was, I was busy, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's really incredible. In fact, well, who's over there? Um, uh, what's what's his? Oh gosh, I'm just drawing a blank. Is is uh, like Kevin uh, Jodry? I think he's over in like Pakistan or somewhere right now doing. He's in one of the, the Morocco, I think. Well, no, yeah, uh, Kevin. I don't know. I, I know him. I know him well actually, but I don't keep in contact with him all the time. I was just thinking. Oh, uh, the the fellow was over with. Uh, oh man, he's on my Facebook. I talked to him. Talked to him. Um, ah, sometimes I have these memory lapses. Uh, not quite sure. Why. It happens to me, and I'm 32, dude. So I. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, he he's over there. There's, uh, see, in Israel, you got to remember the places that they let you grow, grow this plant. It's over there where it's like a dangerous place, you know, where they throw bombs and stuff. They come across the border and they're, they're, they're on lockdown all the time during, during this time with uh, uh, the dispute over there. Uh, yeah. And so, oh man, I just, I'm, I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, anyway, uh, Steve is his first name, but um, yeah, he's a, he's a French guy, French guy. Uh, real nice, real nice, kind of a quiet guy, incredible grower. Uh, but yeah, they're they're throwing bombs over there all the time, and well, his a um, lot, lot of people have been killed right around him, right around there. Yeah, it's sad. It's a sad situation. That's that's absolutely the case. It, it's it, it's tough because when you've got a lot of things like I feel like that's stopping the 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 scientific evolution. A lot of these things. There's been a heavy uptake uptick, let's say, in um, I wouldn't say genetic modification, but uh, basically increasing THC with, with artificial tricks that they're doing and, and the scientists uh, are, are making it so it's for medicinal purposes, we'll say. Is there things that, that you saw from the past that are seeing now that have science that are backing it more? Oh, yeah. Um, one, of, one of my good friends and, and a guy I work with all the time is Dr. Gary Yates. Um, he used to work for Seed, Seedsman. He he still works, or, well, he still writes articles for him. Yeah, it's like it's it's like uh, Dr. Gary Yates, uh, Stefan Meyer, and me. We have formed uh, like this loose partnership. Well, Stefan's a, a direct on partner, but Gary, we're got, we're bringing him in uh, real soon. But he's got a degree in microbiology and also genetics, a uh, doctorate's degree. And he's, he's just one of the smartest guys I know. And he's real approachable. You know, I mean, a lot of these guys, especially with the big companies and stuff, uh, they, they tend to like really focus and go down a rabbit hole and they're not, they're not so, um, uh, they're not very broad, broad spectrum, so to speak. Um, yeah. And also one of the places over here, um, is, well, it's actually in Switzerland, uh, pure gene, pure gene whole, uh, well, pure genes, uh, the name of it. Uh, they've done incredible things with, uh, with, uh, studying things that they're, they're learning. And the deal is right now, see, it's way, for, for example, because we've got to, what we've got to do is squeeze down together the last like 80 years of breeding into the next five to 10 years. Because for example, if you look at Zia mice or something, you know, corn or, or, uh, or, or wheat, these are big commercial crops or soybeans. There's, there's tons of, um, information on them, but they, they, they've been growing and breeding for years and years, you know, since really it started in the, the 1920s. Uh, now, and, and then it, there's just an exponential curve like this. And in, in the fifties, all the way, well, all the way to present day, uh, there's been incredible, what, uh, uh, development there. Uh, so 
Now, though, we're really fortunate because everything's come together at once. The, the plant's now uh, legal or more legal than it was yesterday or the day before. And technology is really inexpensive right now. I mean, look at us. We can talk. I can talk to you from Europe, and you guys are probably in all different places. I, I just look at your background, and you're all all in different locations. I'm not sure about the states or the or the country. We're I'm actually in the all, same we're, room. We're, we're talk- hey, Rob. You're in the same <laughs> room? No. no, no. <laughs> Michigan here, Nevada, and then Canada. So, yeah, I mean, and then we yeah, Spain. Yeah. Like, the fact that we have this this uh, ability to reach such far areas, That's that's kind of what my thought process was with the question is, like, the fact that such a small mass, you know, of Israel, a tiny little place, is getting so much science that's now coming into the states, or in like, um, let's say where Dr. Bruce Bugby is doing a lot of his studies, it's one university, and how much is coming out of that in, in Utah, in Utah of all places? Yeah, that, I never would have guessed Utah. You know, that's so um, of all places. Yeah, I forget that Utah. Yeah, yeah, like, that's, uh, that's but pretty, that's the pretty amazing. science has has shot past what you know we'd say bro science but a lot of that stuff in the past does meet now and we're like oh well i've been doing this for years you know i've been doing this for a long time people say beat your plants up you know i've been training my plants for years by beating them up i don't know <laughs> the the thing is see nobody could talk nobody everybody was afraid to talk about it that's one of the things i learned early on there were, there were people like us everywhere Everywhere, all is well in America, very much so. I, I grew up on the West Coast in Oregon, and lived in both in California and Washington over the co- of course, the, of course, well, my earlier lifetime, and later I, I left the United States. Things changed there, um, and uh, I, I found people all over the place, everywhere, everywhere, that were interested, that had this, the same interests. You know, maybe maybe I just ran into them. Maybe it's you know I've got a magnet or something on me, and they have a magnet. We're we're attracted to each other, but uh, they're, they're they're literally everywhere. Um, it's about ten percent of the population, <laughs> as a matter of fact, and hardcore people like like us are well maybe less than one percent. I'm guessing. Uh, but what what I'm what I found well look at but look at Israel, I mean they've got the best desalinization plants in the world. You know, they also invented the the drip irrigation. They made the desert bloom, and you know I mean there's there's a lot of Arabic countries right now, or half a dozen on Saudi Arabia is one, uh, that have really made the desert bloom, and they've done really uh, just a marvelous job at it, and uh, and, and it's all. All because of simple, well, that was a lot of it's simple science, but now it's getting very, very advanced. You know, we got all kinds of monitors and we can track things. And uh, yeah, but with the genetic stuff, genetic studies, uh, it, it, that's where I'm putting all my energy right now is into genetic uh, gen, uh, genetic studies. And that's why I'm staying so close to Stefan and and well, my, obviously my partner, I said a few times, but, and, and him and Gary, uh, Dr. Gary Yates, it's just funny to call him Dr. Gary, uh, Yates. Um, I don't know, but he is, he's a doctor, you know, he's got a doctor's degree. It sure is an exciting time when you can, you said over five decades, you've been working on this and now you can focus on the breeding aspect. Like that's, that's exciting. Huh? How it like, feels like that's like, gotta be a little bit of retribution to the, to your journey well yeah it it it, it really is because um it, it's interesting because you know if you look at the the industrial side of stuff the the uh the, oh i gosh i i want to keep the the vocabulary the vocabulary clean let's see All the breeding that was done for this plant here. <laughs> yeah, the hemp plant, we'll say. That yeah. was kosher. Yeah. To our magical plant. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, uh, all of those are inbred lines. Most people, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't really realize this until I started looking into it. Um, but they're all inbred lines, you know, here in, here in Europe, there's about 30, 30, 70 different, different, uh, uh, hemp varieties that we can use 
that, that can be grown, you know, for industrially and what, whatnot. And gosh, after that, uh, but they're all inbred lines. So since they're all inbreds, they've got all kinds of, you know, like, uh, like, like what, like show dogs, for example. Show dogs are outbreeders, normally outbreeders like, like humans are, like horses are, like most, many an, most animals are. So they, they, you've got to go outside the gene pool to bring it, bring other, other, um, uh, animals in that are outside this gene pool so you can get so you won't get uh, recessive genes or double recessive. And a lot of times those recessive genes won't show up for five generations, right? Five, five. And, you know, most people release seeds after, well, I don't know, not most people, but there are, there's too many people that release release uh, new varietals or, or uh, uh, new strains as they're called to, um, you know, every year. Uh, they, they may they may breed three three different crops in one year and with a limited very limited gene pool and um, you know put their name on it or put some catchy name on it and flog it real hard and that's that's a, that's a new that's their new offering for the year well in the real plant world it takes like uh, uh, seven years seven years for for vegetables and flowers and or well, outbreeders and and also inbreeders too, ones ones that have the male and female plant together or flowers together. So now everything's changing because we got farmers that are are betting their livelihood on growing, say, uh, five to five hundred acres or hectares of this of this plant. And what happens is if they if they have everything, the whole crop looks like this, and and it's not it's not stable, and and you don't know when you're going to uh, harvest it. Uh, you've got some serious problems. There's like millions of dollars. Well, there can be millions, but uh, easily hundreds and thousands of dollars uh, at stake there. So those guys just don't want to play with it. Um, it's, it's, yeah, and that's why we're seeing so many new technology companies come up and they were all, well, they were all funded real well earlier and now, um, uh, well, funding's kind of dried up because there's a, a glut in the marketplace. But we're going to see the gene, the genetic uh, information go, uh, take off. And, you know, one of the big ones I know that, uh, for example, Humboldt Seed Company is working on, and they've also got some offerings this year, are the, the triploides, or the triploids, triploids, you know. And there's uh, uh, normally, there's biploids that have both the male and the female, and they have, uh, uh, you, you've got to have an even number to be able to breed, and this one has three, so they don't make seeds. Uh, so that's that's one of the one of the benefits. But there's a lot of plants that are triploids. Uh, watermelon's a big one. Uh, that's a triploid, and that's why the watermelons are so big now. You know, and they've got so many uh, different things. There's a long list of triploids uh, and quadruploids as well. But quadruploids aren't quite so inter- interesting. But we're going to see uh, big jumps as far as uh, uh, genetics go. Uh, definitely, and then now I remember. In fact, I just saw a picture of that uh, Neville Schumacher's. Um, he's not with us anymore. You know, I don't have one of the old catalogs. Um, <laughs> had to had to get rid of them all one day. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of like a evidence. A sad day. This is scared the hell out of me. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, that day, it was a sad day, a scary day. Uh, uh, it was evidence and you know, all, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it was a confusing day, but uh, I'm glad I had a, a fireplace. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of controversy surrounding these, these triploids. Or, and I think it's because people who are the home growers who you know, those of us who found bag seeds over the years or those who are cloners, you know, we want to be cloning everything. We're worried that that's going to be the end of genetics, but there's auto flowers too. And there's, there's going to be photo periods. And I think people are confused on, this is probably going to be more for commercial agriculture. 
First, let's talk about the the the, the uh, ruderalis, the the the, the ruderalis, the, the uh, autoflow, the one that's, that's there's only a couple of genes that control that, right? So you can take those two genes, and this is just a recent recent information that's come out actually publicly. Um, <laughs> I'll have to admit I did know this a while back, but I wasn't allowed to talk about it. Uh, but I can't I can't say anything else other than that. But the deal is with with the with the autoflower plants, um, those are very very popular, and there's been tons of work done with them. But and the reason I brought up uh, uh, Neville and the seed bank, uh, you know, Neville's not with us anymore. He passed away like I think three years ago. Yeah. Anyway, he uh, uh, so rest in peace, Neb. Um But on the cover of one of his, uh, well, the main catalog that I helped him print and distribute in the United States, he sent a, I got all the artwork there and found a printer and printed it and got it distributed for him. We, we did 50,000 the first year, 50,000. Yeah, catalogs. Yeah, it was great. And then anyway, after that, um, what happened was um, on the cover, I just saw this on cannabis, oh, uh, this, the, the world, uh, uh, that word plus world. Uh, and anyway, it, uh, he was in Hungary. And I remember we, we sat around and, and puffed out and talked about it a lot. Uh, there, there was this plant, this, uh, uh, a ruderalis plant, auto flowering plant, and it's alongside the, the highway in, in Hungary. And that's where, you know, and, and he had the seeds and everything way back then. But nobody, we, we didn't know there was just a couple of genes that controlled, to, that controlled the auto flower part. So, um, you know, and, and there was a lot more commercial commercial stuff to do than uh, <laughs> than than develop a new new uh, variety because well there was a lot of a lot of varieties uh, that were being uh, that well he certainly he collected everything and then started started breeding and, and uh, did did very well and and uh, really helped the world a lot um, but that was gosh that was back in the early 80s um, anyway, nobody could do anything with that plant because they didn't know what to do. And then later, some years later, it was Sasha, the from Sasha from. Um, oh, he's, he has a big farm outside of Montreal. He comes over to the Spanabis. Uh, I, 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 not every year, but about every third year he's here. He was here the last couple of years because, you know, because of COVID and there wasn't one. But he's the first one that, that, that really took and did anything with that plant because he's in a in, in really a, a rough climate up there and in, in outside of Montreal and eastern Canada. And, you know, they got they those like six-month winters and stuff. So, uh, and then he developed one that was called the White Dwarf. And then after that, we had, we had, it was big over here. We call it Inano Blanco, the same name, just Spanish, but Inano Blanco. And uh, then they developed it from that. But now, gosh, I was in my hometown, Ontario, Oregon, uh, two years ago, and there's a, a doctor there. He's Professor Emeritus at uh, Oregon State University. Uh, Dr. Clint Shock is his name, and he's he's a lifetime breeder. Uh, he's spent uh, twenty years and talks okay Portuguese. He spent about about twenty years, fifteen years, I think, in in uh, southern Brazil, uh, working on stevia. He's got a whole house. I went over to his house. Well, the the one house that he has over at the Oregon. Um, uh, Oregon State University Research Center in, in Ontario, Oregon. This whole house is full of seeds. The whole thing. He's got, yeah, it, it's amazing. But uh, now we've got guys like uh, like plant work in there. Uh, and man, he's um, he knows what he's doing. He's uh, done a real good job with, with everything, but he's the one that's working on the, the, the autoflower plants, you know, and they've taken, 
the, I, I used to poo poo him because I didn't I didn't think there was much about him. But man, this guy uh, he's he's got him huge. He's got him huge already. They grow faster, and and um, you can you can mix this with the the, the triploid triploid uh, factor, and there's there's just a lot more information that we know because before everybody was working. Well, they were just in the basement, you know, and the gene pool was limited. And you, you, you really have to have thousands of plants. Um, and then as well, there's all kinds of breeding programs. Bre- breeding's really, it's about numbers and it's about collecting data. And uh, that, that, that is really the, the long and short of it. So... There's companies now. Well, there's one one company that they they take this data. Well, most everybody does. I mean, it's it's like uh, straightforward. Uh, you make all you you collect all the data you can about a population. You feed this into your computer, and then you uh, you make uh, oh, what a what if scenario. What if I cross this plant with this plant, and and uh, so you have to grow out fewer of them. And you you really narrow your your parameters, uh, and it works really well. I can mention AI is probably really helping with that now, with the predictability in the the future. It probably will soon. People will make GPTs that can do it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure about that because this is all collected data. Uh, AI will collect a lot of data from all over the place and put it in a somewhere but i'm really i don't know enough about that to agree with you i I I think if they were able to create their because like with ai you can like teach the bot so to speak what it is so if they were to plug all that data in and make their own gpt so to speak like that would be i never thought about the fact of of predictive like the what if scenarios like if this then that kind of thought process so if you can teach your bot or your ai that it can help you do a lot of that and that that would be some next level stuff i never thought about the the what if scenarios with your, because I always think you have to do that to figure out what if, but you can also take these and, and look at the science behind it now because you can get a COA and see your THC and all your cannabinoids and your, your different terpenes and maybe how those would react with other ones. That's that's an interesting thought process. I never thought about. Right, right, right. No, that's very true. It's, it's probably going to be five, 10 years down the road, but it's like, that sounds like it could be like advanced breeding techniques there is, is really using the science with technology. Everything I saw was collected data, and I just don't know if there's enough information out there to draw upon. Maybe other plants, but see when you change, and there's similarities between between different species, and and but I don't know. Maybe it's that's that's beyond my my comprehension right now. I'd have to. That'll be the kids teaching us that in the future. That'll be the the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. These advancements are like super, super exciting. Um, you actually remind me of a, a question I want to bring up. Well, first of all, I have your, your book here. I, when I started growing, uh, when I started growing 14 years ago now, crazy to think, I bought your book and that had been my go-to guy, the grower's Bible. Uh, I learned so much from there. Um, back then, it was a lot of it was going over my head, but now that I reread it in recent years, a lot of it makes sense. And, um, you know, we're talking about the advancements of breeding in this conversation here. Um, males, female plants. One of the things in here, uh, it's actually on page 20. It's talking about um, growing more uh, females from seed. And I don't oh, know yeah. if you remember this yeah. part. Yeah. So you remember this part here. So we talk about advancements. Now they have, uh, it's pretty cool, the DNA sex testing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's been around for quite a while, actually. Yeah, so you can send in the plant tissue, and they'll tell you whether it's male or female. So I was wondering, are some of these things actually still uh, relevant? Like uh, here it says, um, you know, low temperatures increases the number of female plants. Warm temperatures makes more male plants. High humidity increases the number of female plants. Low humidity increases the male plants. So even after it's been DNA sex tested and the result comes in that it's female, for example, are you saying it could still revert to a male plant due to those stresses? Probably not. Probably. Okay. I mean, the key word there is probably. Uh, because because uh, what a plant wants to do is is survive and make seeds. Making seeds is, is the entire goal. 
because that way the generation can be, uh, well, it, it can be procreated and it can live for, you know, generations and generations. That's, that's the goal. So anytime you stress a plant, um, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I, I can't give you the best answer because I don't have a doctorate's degree and I haven't, um, I don't have that level of knowledge. Uh, I certainly wish I did, and I wish I could say I did, but I'd be pulling your leg, and, and I just can't do that, uh, you know? Um, I love the honesty, man. That's, that's the, but see, it's like like I said earlier, is I decided to do these videos to share the experience that I have, the knowledge that I have. Some of the videos I put out in the past have been debunked, so to speak, that now <laughs> science has come out, and it says it, and I fully admit that, but at the time, I did it, and maybe it was an, you know anecdotal, and it was bro science, but it sure as shit seemed like I was getting more trichomes. Maybe maybe I thought it was just in my head, but it looked that way, and I think that's where there's a lot of things then, you look at it, and it's like when, if you do a side-by-side -side with the same cultivar or clone, Sometimes you can see those differences, but then I've done things like uh, 48 hours of darkness versus not doing it from when harvesting a plant. Notice no difference side by side. Only once I did them side by side did I notice it, but I didn't, I swear in my head, I was like, dude, look at the difference. You can tell the colors, it swells more. It's like, there's some stuff that now we don't even have to do because the scientists are doing it. That's why I love that you're getting more into the genetics is it's like, they're going through and doing these thousand plant studies. So I don't need to be the guinea pig at home. I just want to grow fire. And I think that's where... The concern with a lot of people for the, the triploids is that it's going to cut out that natural genetic process of creating seeds. But then at the same time, there's those people who don't care and are totally like the commercial growers are like, hey, we can't risk it. We need a predictable grow. We need it to be exactly what it is. And that's why you do see the, the GMOs, the negative GMOs, unfortunately, a lot of times with corn and soy and these other things. Hopefully it doesn't go in a negative way with our plant. But you see commercial grows looking in the sense that they're needing predictability for the dollar. And as long as that demand and the, the supply has to meet, I think home growers, we got less concerned because we were, I mean, Chris himself was able to create his own genetics in his house. He didn't have a massive greenhouse to do it. You can do it on your own, but I think that it's the passion. If you're not really passionate about it, then maybe you're willing to just pay every time. It's, it's cheaper than going to Dispo. Well, it's way, way, way better to deal with uh, educated people and know what the heck's going on. I mean, at, uh, you know, uh, a few years ago, I was, I was a smart guy, but now I don't have a doctorate's degree. I don't have a specialization um, in, in, in genealogy or microbiology. And uh, now there's a lot of other people that are, they, they just know more and they've got better facilities than, than me. I, I mean, I've, I may be a pioneer, but man, and you know, and things were rough, and you know, I got it's just like, fuck yes, I'll do it, man. You know, I, 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 I got that down. You know, I'm good at that, yeah. But um, you know, <laughs> you, you know, it takes it takes everybody, not just one guy. You know, and this the the thing is the the ego. Um, I don't have much use for egos other than you know to stay alive. But this this ego stuff, um, I, I've been around it too much in this industry, and and it's uh, it's one of the reasons I stayed so quiet. I, I don't look for awards or or anything. I mean, this is a reward right here. See, you appreciate guys. that. Man. Yeah, I think like that's that's really the difference, though, and I think that's why you got into it. Those egos and those cash croppers, they kept all the trade secrets. They didn't want to share anything. And that's where the people in today, like we're not directly profiting from teaching people. Like if anything, we're, we're the ones who are like hurting the commercial growers because we're telling the home grower to go home and do it this way. Like I, I'm, the, I'm a person who wants everyone to know how to cultivate on their own, whether it be for the plant we love or to feed your family. But there's no reason you should be spending your hard earned money on something that should be affordable for everybody. So I'm uh, all about why would you hold back the secrets? Like I want to talk about everything. And I think that's where those egos, those greedy people, they're out there, but the community and the industry, we kind of have a little separation. The community, we, we share, we work together. We, we, everybody's a part of this, this whole thing, the industry, they're kind of poaching on pieces. We're trying to meet in the middle and find a way where we all can work together, you know? And, and well, it works, it works. And, and, um, one of my one of my favorite sayings is like, you can do this at home now. 
<laughs> do it yourself. Try it yourself. See if it works. Don't take my word. Don't take somebody else's word. Do it yourself and find, and, and make it make it work. Because uh, you look at uh, look at the book that uh, Chris held up that you, you guys have all read, and and you think uh, I, I give you tools tools so you can so you can learn so you can make so you can learn your own stuff and move forward. It's like, don't count on me, count on yourself. You're the guy to count on. Um, and if you make a mistake, well, you pay for it, and, you know, um, <laughs> that, that way you learn. But, um, you know, perfect every time now, it's not going to be. It's not, you know, things aren't perfect. Uh, you got to do your... It, it's your willingness, Jorge, to share and spread knowledge that has kind of shown that shift in, in the culture uh, over the years, you said five decades you've been putting in that time <laughs> and, 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 you know, Hey, you know, hats oh, off, gee. hats off. I can't wait to have those numbers under my belt. Man. We're going to work hard for that. Um, but how can you, can you kind of describe the shift in perception over time from, from, from when you started even being in as an American to, 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 uh, what do you call someone from Spain? A Spaniard? Espanol. A Spaniard. A Spaniard. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Spaniard. So, so from, yeah. from American yeah. to Spaniard, how has that perception changed over your, your time of activism? Oh, man. Um, uh, right now, people are much more, much more uh, sophisticated than they used to be. Uh, you know, I, I remember one time we were, we were at a campground and I was hanging out. There's this guy. This was like before I. Well, no, I'd already written. No, no, it was before I'd written a book, and he was he was convinced that the the uh, THC was tick. He says, "Oh, that tick! That's the thing you got to have. This tick, tick, tick." And he would repeat tick. And the, you know, the, the guy he was just ill informed. You know, I could call him call him stupid, but he wasn't. He's just ignorant. He didn't know any better, and he was totally convinced. Um, what's another like really dynamic example? Uh, hydroponics, hydroponics. People used to say hydrophonics, like hydro and, <laughs> yeah, and phonics, like <laughs> here. Uh, yeah. Hydrophonics, like uh, phonics. Hooked on phonics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, there was trichromes. I hear that still to this day. Tri trichrome. <laughs> or, or triclones because uh, they kind of look like clones. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just people are just ill-informed. They just don't know and they don't, they don't bother to, to find out. Another one, um, there was somebody that had their, uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny. They had their own strand of, of a uh, plant strand, like a, a strand of a strand of hair, a strand of rope, um, had nothing to do with this. Well, you're getting so many more people who are like the now. I can call the because I'm very big on like what 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 cultivar is that? Because now I call it cultivar always instead of strain. Like and now, like I, I get all too specific, and you got to find the happy medium. I feel like because it's it's pop culture now. I mean, there's shows on Netflix and and like. Literally, you're not. We're no longer just the dumb stoners. Like it's becoming a pop culture thing. So it's like I feel like the whole perception is changing, and people are becoming a lot more educated. But with that, we don't have as many educated consumers. Still, people are looking for tick. They're looking for THC. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all they want. Oh, so that's all they want. So, like, yeah, and I yeah. think that's where oh, the man. science is evolving. Luckily, with the genetics, where when people are are cultivating these genetics, they're highlighting THC as they understand that's what the market still looks for. But they're bringing up all these other cannabinoids that are getting people hyped. They're like, oh, wow, high terpene levels. When I see a terpene percentage, that's when I get geeked up. Yeah, there's, it, it, it's funny because there, there's, there's buzzwords like uh, land race. Land race is kind of like the, the current buzzword um, or one of the current buzzwords. And I mean, yeah, exotic, what the heck's that mean? You know, it's, it's like something that's not next door. It's not the next door neighbor. I mean, just like, hey, you know, exotic, <laughs> literally, where you live would be exotic. exotic. Everything is exotic in Spain for us. Yeah, okay. I suppose Everything. So. I suppose so. But uh, to me, it's like, it, as we say, it's what they're in. They're lucky I, you know, it's, uh, I don't, I don't see it so exotic uh, as much, you know. We've got a lot of old buildings here. In fact, <laughs> no, Those are exotically old. 
Well, <laughs> I mean, a couple thousand. It was a couple thousand years old. It's it's old. Uh, but I know. think we've got a, a misconception with. Uh, with a lot of the people is they, they look at what we used to have and, and we still do have areas in, in America that are prohibition states and there's countries that still are battling for legalization, which is crazy to me that it still is a conversation, especially when now we're looking at corporate greed. Well, this is the opportunity for you to come and grab some quick cash for the first two years. Every state that does it makes a billion plus and the worst companies flourish and then vanish. But it's like, it, it breaks ground for the masses. And I, I get mad as the home grower and as someone who's been involved in the commercial side where I'm like, Egh. but everyone who benefits is the masses of people who can consume, whether it be medicinally or recreationally. I think that the, the people like yourselves who are taking the arrows, making it so, you know, people can see how to do this properly are making it. So we're being able to push more into places like hopefully Texas soon or, you know, Oklahoma is legal, which is blown up for uh, legalization. I like, know well, that's places, a, Oklahoma. That's the one that amazes me. Yeah, in yeah, fact, shocked I, me. One of my the guys in the Garden Writers Association, like years ago, uh, was what's his, uh, Steve Dobbs. He was the state horticulturist, and um, yeah, I was. Uh, we were friends, you know. I mean, I like the guy. He was just so kind of. He's who he was, you know. I mean, um, I I learned a lot from him too, but um, <laughs> I just can't see that state being uh, a, a legal state, you know. I, I remember Steve so well, and that was like oh gosh, twenty five years ago or more uh, that I knew him. And well, you know, I mean, the history of Oklahoma is really incredible. Uh, that's uh, Oklahoma used to be the badlands, the, the the no man's land. You could go there because the the eastern United States they all had laws. Oklahoma was the only state that didn't have laws, and that's where all the all of the criminals went. They all hung out there. Yeah, and then there was another guy. Uh, I'm kind of a history buff. I don't know. It's off off the subject. Another guy named uh, what's first name? His last name was Bass. Bass. Um, he was a, a black guy, a black guy, a freed slave, real smart guy, tough guy. Well, he was he was the biggest bounty hunter in the entire in the entire history of bounty hunters. He brought in over a hundred different criminals, and or well, uh, took them in criminals, meaning they had to come in for to to face trial. And most of them, he didn't really pull a gun on or anything. He befriended them and. And and uh, tied him up or put handcuffs. Well, he didn't really have handcuffs on, but he caught him. And this is the kicker: it, everybody believes that there. Well, there's some people that believe that. Actually, more people believe this than not. But remember the old series, The Lone Ranger. I don't know if you guys yep. know that one, The Lone Ranger. It was really big when I was growing up. The The Lone Ranger is based on this guy, Bass. Bass, that's his last name, Bass. Yeah, you can look him up, B-A-S-S. -S. Yeah, uh, quite an interesting guy. Uh, yeah. And, With and an area see, like, like and, Oklahoma, you wouldn't think like that whole area, and that's what I'm saying, like that southern kind of region of legalization, Oklahoma's community is huge. I mean, with the Cowboy Cup and with, with the amount of people who are our viewers who are from Oklahoma who are like huge enthusiasts of this plant, it's crazy. And like you said, everywhere you go, doesn't matter where you go, there's somebody who is – super passionate about this plant and it's it's i don't see that like with orchids i know there's orchid society oh, oh, oh no orchids i have to say i was that orchids maybe it's the wrong one that okay, would be yeah, one that no, would... that's the wrong one because those guys yeah. are, they're like all uh they're they're, they're nutcases all of them I yeah my uncle's a mad different... orchid like yeah exactly exactly yeah, um, so there's oh. a few few plants though that's what maybe that was the, the like one that are people yeah. are enthusiasts <laughs> like it's their lifestyle this is our whole my my main channel is the plant lifestyle that's the name of it and we'll say the plant and it's like i yeah i'm so passionate about this and it's hard to think that there's any areas that have that are illegal that are prohibition areas that don't have people like us that are there who are trying to breed who are trying to grow who are trying to evolve in this space and are looking at people like us on the internet as their pioneers and are, are teaching them these things so it's it's cool to see that the inspiration and how this can flow the green wave will so to so to speak that's coming over the whole world. Good, and then they can start their own their own podcast and help other people too, because that's that's a big thing. We got to spread this information out and uh, make sure everybody's got a complete opportunity to grow. 
Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And in, in fact, one of my, and, and I was just uh, texting back and forth with him. Good, real good friend of mine is uh, Jeff, Jeff Lowenfels. He's, um, he wrote uh, Teeming with Microbes, Teeming with Everything. He's got, I don't even know how many books he's got. Uh, he's he's got also a great... pioneer of the game. The guy's very, very bright guy. A lot of people credit his books as starting them with organic, with cultivation, period. You know, good, so. good, good, good. Because, uh, yeah, he's just a wonderful guy, wonderful guy. But he and, and, and I met him. He used to be assistant attorney general in, in Alaska, actually. Uh, yeah. And he was the one that uh, wrote into the, the law when the plant was legalized up there that, uh, that your house your car, your tent, all of these counted as your domicile. So if you got, if you, if you, if you were in your tent out in the country and, and you had a problem, uh, you couldn't be arrested. Uh, you had a strong defense. Yeah. He was the one that added that. He he doesn't, he doesn't always blow his own horn, but, but uh, uh, not, I mean, he's not even good at it, but I'll tell you what he's done. He's, um, uh, Oh man, he started. He started a, a very big program in in the Garden Writers Association called Planter Row for the Hungry, and it's a real simple program to start. It's just everybody participates, and uh, and it costs nothing, nothing to publicize it. And so my my idea, and I, I've talked about public publicizing it, uh, but there, there really hasn't been enough of our favorite plant to, to promote it until the last few years. Now there's a glut of our favorite plant, so it's much easier to promote it because otherwise, you know, I mean, it had a, where I've got euros here, it had a, it had a euro figure, on it. yeah, I'll hold up the euro. It had, it had a monetary value, right? So now now it's got much less of a monetary value and it's much easier to give away and i think now would be a real good time to start it um but plant plant for a patient is what i'd like to like to start and i'd like to get a lot of people interested but jeff pretty much single-handedly started that program in the garden writers and now i mean because before that they had the the gleaners societies it's all but they didn't have they didn't have anything about hunger and now a lot of people are able to to plant um uh, plant more than they need and they can give it away uh, I, I'm sure that, you know, uh, uh, people that sell it aren't going to be happy, but so what? So what? Get over you know, it. Like, I mean, honestly, where people who need it wouldn't be buying it from you. Yeah. Yeah. I people mean, I don't have the money for it. They're not your customer. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, I, I, I've helped a few million people. Right. And so what, what happens to me? I got all these friends everywhere. Is that that's better than money? Darn right. It is. Yeah, you got a legacy. You got a full legacy that you've created. You've created, you've inspired thousands of other people to educate online, online educators, other authors. That's the power. I think of that's this where plant. it's like. That's the power of this. Plant. I was just gonna say that exact thing. I think that's the power of this As, plant is that it brings so many people together. It it changes. I mean, you could make money off it. You could change lives with it. You can uh, medicate people with it. You could use it as a buzz. It's an alternative to alcohol. There's so many benefits from it. That are, that's just scraping the surface. But I think the issue is that with prohibition still being heavy in places, it's tough for those people without having to relocate. We know uh, I can THC, another content creator, another homie of ours, he relocated from uh, you know his home all the way into America because he wanted to be able to legally comfortably grow. And plus it was so expensive to be able to you know get stuff shipped where he was at. And I think you see people doing that. And if you're that passionate about the planet, it may be worth it, but it's tough if you have a family or if you're in a place of poverty. You know, that's where it's great if there's programs like that to be able to help those people who don't have it. One of my real good friends, uh, Paul Stanford, uh, who lives in Oregon, he's the one that signed up more more people than anybody else for, for medical cards in Oregon uh, during the toughest time. He, 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 hired, hired, he hired doctors, you know, just to says, somebody comes in, they, they say this, they, they say they want a prescription. He goes, give it to them. That's what you're paid for, right? <laughs> and uh, anyway, he's, he gives away he gives away almost an entire crop, his pretty much his whole crop every year. Um, and he's he's one of my heroes. 
um, another hero of mine, good friend too, is, is Doctor Doctor uh, Jeffrey uh, or Jeff Jeff Hergen rather. He's uh, he's the one that started. Well, he, he he was the one that stood up. One of the first guys that well, the first doctor that stood up in California. You know, and these guys are selfless people, and they're just they're just happy all the way. You know, like down to the bone, they're happy. So you know, I don't know uh, how much uh, the, a lot of money makes you happy. It makes some people pretty happy. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to say, but it, it's 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 nothing like having. Uh, having the respect of people. You know, Jorge, you're quick to share other people's stories, but I have to ask you, as a legend in my eyes, what would you like your legacy to be within this community, uh, in, in, considering everything you've contributed to the uh, to the cause? Man, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a big question. Um, I've done, you know, I, I got a lot of people started to starting to, to grow, um, just just by telling the truth. That's all I did. Just tell the truth. Nothing else. Um, and that that was good. It was it was hard to tell the truth because, well, it would have been easier not to. Um, and then um, I've given away a lot of information. You know, this this the latest one is this, and I and the other thing is um, I've done things. You know, all over the world. Um, man, I don't know. I mean, just uh, a, a guy that shares information, I guess. And that's exactly you're the, so humble. And that's man. exactly I, what I, I remember. You're very humble, guy. honest, uh, you, you're very caring, open hearted, very charismatic. Um, those are things that I'm gonna that that, that I'm gonna think of when I think of uh, Jorge Cervantes. Uh, I got to be honest with you, man. We, we could talk all damn day. This is like I feel like we just sit and chill. We we haven't even had a smoke yet. Oh, uh, I think you were at MJ BizCon uh, this year, were you? No, this no, year, huh? actually, Stefan, Stefan went there, and um, so someone a part of your team was there then, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Ste- uh, Stefan Meyer, he he was there and representing me, well, yeah, my partner, and then uh, uh, the year before that, <laughs> the year before that, what we did is uh, we. <laughs> Because um, oh, I went to America earlier this year. I went, or no, last year it was. I went to the uh, uh, Humboldt Seed Company for the. Uh, uh, the oh yeah, I saw that. That was yeah, that was, was uh, that was a lot of fun. I'm really impressed with those guys. They're uh, they've done a real good job. I'm, I'm very happy with very happy with all the stuff they're doing. And I uh, and I got a, I got a, we we're talking about Spanibus. And if we end up doing that and we come out your neck of the woods, I'd love to get together and maybe have an oh, interview. Yeah, sure. sure. That'd be great. Sure. And sure. I don't know if you're uh, currently okay. consuming, but I'd love to, uh, to consume a little bit with you. Put it, put oh, it yeah, in the sure. air. Sure. Sure. Uh, Spain is, well, Spanibus is the biggest, it's the biggest, the biggest fair in Europe. It used to be the biggest in the world until that, uh, the Las Vegas show took over. Um, it went down to one day, right? It's only one day now instead of three days for Spanibus. Well, no, 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 no. Son tres días total. Uh, three days, yeah. Still three days? It's the okay. 15th, 15th to the 17th of March. Oh, wow. That's creeping right up. Yeah. Uh, somebody told uh, me it went down to one day, but uh, uh, no, it's good. It's still three days. They're, they're pulling your leg and they're ill informed. Uh, they, they, they weren't doing themselves or anybody a service. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's really great. Actually, I don't know where it's going. Mobile phone. Yeah, actually, I'll. I'm not going to speak at the fair. Um, let me go. Let me get Ruben's uh, thing here. Yeah, R- Ruben. Yeah, he sent me. I'm. I'm doing. Yeah, I'll do. I'll do a talk beforehand. Well, oh, where is this? Nice. Uh, if you dim, well, if anyways, you dim your phone, it's on the phone. Now. What is Oh, the phone's yeah. always it's tough on the computer. You, yeah, you got to drop, make it low so you can't see it, but your computer can yep. see it. Oh, okay. that's how they'll see that's us how that works? at night. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. Yep, that's better. That's better. Yeah, but nice. anyway, so that you'll be at uh, at Spanibus then too. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. No, I, I, I know every. I've been here for twenty for twenty years, man. I know everybody in 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 Europe. So, I mean, everybody. You know, um, I, I can't stop. I can't stop 
uh, for more than 30 seconds or I have a crowd. It's, it's really, no, I, I can't tell. I, if I go anywhere, I have to look down and walk real fast and be behind somebody like I'm following them and have somebody be, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Oh, dude, it's, I don't doubt it, man. That's where you have to bring the, the, the hat and the, the beat, get everything back and just be incognito. It makes sense. I mean, you've been around for so long. We were at MJ BizCon and uh, Ed Rosenthal was there and he got mobbed. We were there. I was. I had a couple words with him and uh, it was just people, person after person after person looking for a picture and stuff. So I totally, totally could see that happening to you as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, um, yeah, that that happens nonstop. Very used to it over the years though, man. But yeah. So yeah. if we make it out that, that way, we'll definitely reach out and uh, we will chat a little bit after the episode here, but that won't, won't take any more of your time. And it was a great episode. Great chatting with you and really appreciate your time on here, dude. Definitely. Real quick, real quick. I know you've got, uh, you've got a book. What's your, uh, what's, what's the, if, if anyone wants to get a hold of you or wants to participate in the speech, where could they uh, get the a hold? website? Just say the website. It is what it is. We'll say it. Website. This, this one here. And then all of the, uh, uh, Jorge Cervantes dash or uh, Jorge dash Cervantes dot com is is my personal one. You can see you can see the fifty books I wrote and uh, a bit of a history of my life. You know, it's and <laughs> I didn't drag it on. You know, I <laughs> just hit the, <laughs> hit the highlights. It's not boring. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> only imagine, uh, man. One day there'll be a movie <laughs> of you. Oh, I don't know. I don't, they did one about Howard. Howard, it did really well. Uh, Howard Marks, I don't know if you know him, Mr. Nice. He was... Uh, really Mr. Nice, I'm like familiar 20, with Mr. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, but he had like 25 aliases and stuff. Yeah. Worked for yeah. the MI6, the M- MI5. The, it's yes. like the, the, the security agencies from Netherlands, or from, from the UK. Yeah. Anyway, he was a good friend. He's not with us anymore. I know his daughter real well. We we stay in touch. This one's going down in the books for me. I'm telling you that. Yeah. Well, cool. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Please publicize it and get it around. You know, make sure make sure a lot of people see it. Maybe they'll be inspired. That's the intent. Hey, for sure. For sure. So that being said, it's uh, Rob from CLTV, Pigeons 420, Mr. Joe Cervantes. We'll see you guys next time.